Hi guys, Don Rice here, and we're looking at a Zeroli P47. I'm getting ready to mold a new canopy, and <clears throat> so I've I think the last time we left off, I had just finished fiberglassing uh, this new foam mold, and so I have since um, primed it, filmed it, filled it, primed, sanded. Uh, and gotten it to as near to perfect as I think it needs to be and um, I'm getting ready to uh, cast the uh, the negative off of this thing so I just finished sanding uh, the last coat of primer went on last night and our last few coats of primer went on last night and this morning I've sanded it with 400 to knock off the orange peel and then sanded with 600 and then with 1000 grit and there's a couple of little minor areas here you can't feel that but you can kind of see it uh, I'm not worried about that in the same way that I am not worried about this little bit of wood showing through because all the imperfections that I can see in this thing actually appear uh, on where the frame goes and the frame will be a, a fiberglass piece that's placed on top of the the clear canopy so I just wanted to show you that I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for um, splashing a, a negative off of this thing and come back to you in a second Okay, so I'm back in the shop here, and I've put on uh, one coat of wax on here. I was planning on actually laying up the, the negative uh, using several layers of fiberglass and making a, a hard fiberglass mold um, from which I would then cast uh, the, the final plug for vacuum forming. But... Um, Earlier this week, I was on the phone trying to find some UltraCal 30, uh, and I was thinking about going down the path uh, that has been blazed by Merlin Graves, and uh, there are no local UltraCal 30 vendors, and so I could order 20 pounds from Chicago, and uh, with shipping, which was like 50 bucks, it would, would have cost me about 70, 70 bucks for 20 pounds. Or I could have gotten, I think, 50 pounds from Iowa for about 75 bucks. But then I found a vendor up in uh, Los Angeles, just up the road, uh, and <laughs> and I could get 100 pounds uh, with and and with like 40 dollars shipping, it'd be 80 bucks. So I could I could spend 70 bucks on 20 pounds or 80 bucks on 100 pounds. Bottom line is I got 100 pounds of Ultra Cal 30. No idea what I'm going to do with that much freaking UltraCal 30, but it's basically a, a gypsum-based uh, plaster cement molding thing. And I thought, what the hell? I'm going to I'm going to try and do this kind of like Merlin does. And so the prep's been done here, um, and uh, I've got I need to put some fences on, but um, I've got one layer of. Um, uh, wax put on here. I know Merlin. I know Merlin doesn't actually tend to use wax with Ultra Cal 30. He normally just sprays it with Pam cooking spray, and I intend to spray this with Pam cooking spray also. Uh, but um, I don't know. Not waxing a mold just goes against everything I believe in, and. Um, and I'm not in as, Merlin's always in a hurry. Merlin can build five planes in the time it takes me to build one. So, um, I just want to make sure, damn sure, that the thing pops off. So, I'm going to put some, uh, I'm going to put a couple coats of wax on it. So, get that coat, coat off, sort of, and... Honey wax. This is a mold release wax. Um, it's stuff I've been using for a number of years. 
I don't do a whole lot of molding, but uh, what I do, this is the stuff I use. So uh, I got this from McMaster Car. That's all you do right there. Let that dry for a while. Go do something else. And uh, I'll come back and get you in a bit. Okay, so here we are like, uh, I don't know, 27 seconds later. And I wanted to make some like catch trays sort of for the Ultra Cal uh, to keep from flowing all over the airplane and to kind of make some lips for me to um, use when this female mold gets flipped over and I pour the, the, the male mold. Anyway, so these are just some scrap um, half inch MDF uh, shelf board uh, with melamine. Um, but once I screwed them together and I got them all fitted and all that kind of nonsense, um, I went ahead and put some uh, uh, um, packing tape on here, which works really well as a, a non-stick item. But, and then these things are just, uh, they're just hot glued to the side of my airplane. So hopefully, you know, a little rubber mallet will just pop those things off when the time comes. Uh, and then I put some clay here in the, uh, uh, to fill the, the gap right here. So normally, you know, you see guys do this and, and they're doing two-part molds, like to lay up a fuselage or something. And you need to you need to make this a nice sharp corner that you know where this plane meets this plane you know in a in a perfect angle. Uh, I don't need that because there is no second part to this mold. Um, this is just going to make a negative plug, if you will. And so there's one on the other side. Um, I can say that making those things wasn't particularly fun. It's the first time I've tried to make them. Um, you can see they are not uh, operating at 180 degrees to one another. Uh, and that's right. I don't give a shit. So they are what they are. They are basically just temporary uh, dams. And we'll see how this all works shortly. 